<laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Xiao Peng Yan from Syracuse University. Uh, today, I'm here to present our work, Overcoming the Memory Wall with, C uh, with CXL Enable SSDs. This is a joint work by Syracuse University, Digis, uh, Songshi University, and Fado Inc. To start off the talk, let's talk about memory wall. Uh, the figure here shows the uh, model size of reason natural language mo uh, processing models, like GPT. And as you can see, um, the model size is increasing 14.1 times per year. However, at the same time, uh, the available G uh, memory resource on GPU is only growing 1.3 times per year. And this gap is what we call the memory wall, and it can affect, uh, uh, have huge impact on data intensive applications. And sometimes developers have to be aware of uh, their memory usage, and sometimes have to manually manage their uh, memory resources. So as a result, we believe it's really important to study the methods to overcome the memory wall in an application transparent manner. Um, here's some good news. So thanks to a previous, uh, previous presenter, I don't need to give uh, too much detail about CXL. But I want to strengthen that, uh, I want to strengthen that um, CXL, Compute Express Link, or CXL, is a new cache coherent PCIe-based interconnect that enables direct memory access between CPU and endpoints via low and store instructions. And this feature making it possible uh, to expand memory with CXL compatible devices, just like the figure here shows. And since CXL enables new opportunities to expand memory uh, with PCIe-based device, we wonder uh, fa flash, uh, if flash memory, which can be PCIe-based devices, is a good memory expansion option. And in fact, prior proposals, such as uh, Sensone's mem memory semantic SSD or CXL SSD appears on uh, Hot Storage 22, are the examples for CXL flash. And this work has shown the feasibility and potential of using such a device. Um, however, even though this is a very exciting opportunity, we still wonder if flash memory can really handle the intensity of memory, requ uh, memory requests because there are three major challenges. First, there's granularity mismatch. Uh, host requests are typical in 64 byte granularity, whereas flash memory, uh, memory manages data in page granularity, which can be a few kilobytes. And this mismatch can cause high remodified write traffic and degrade performance. Uh, second, flash memory is just slower than DRAM device. Uh, DRAM has a rewrite latency at a scale of tens of nanoseconds, whereas flash memory has rewrite latency at um, way above one microsecond. And sometimes it depends on the cell technology, flash memory uh, can be 1,000 times slower than DRAM. And third, uh, unlike DRAM, flash memory has a limited endurance. Um, after repeated program and erase, uh, the oxide layer of flash memory cell can wear out, and this worn out devices can have unstable performance and can be deemed unusable later. So in this work, we primarily want to uh, use CXL flash to overcome the memory wall. And first we create uh, two design tools, a uh, physical memory tracer and a trace-driven simulator to model CXL flash. We then explore the design space of CXL flash by integrating existing optimization techniques. And finally, we analyze the effectiveness of existing algorithms in, in terms of improving uh, uh, CXL flash performance, and we later present a, a potential system level change that can further improve the device performance. So I want to give a little bit more detail about our work. So let's start with memory tracing. The, the figure here shows the access patterns for matrix multiplication. And these are scatter plots. So each dot on it, it's, uh, its uh, host request and represent uh, each host request. And the x-axis here shows the access order or the time of the request. And the y-axis here shows the page number of uh, uh, the request access. And the left-hand figure here shows the virtual memory access pattern, where the right-hand one shows the physical memory access pattern. 
And as you can see, the access pattern for the same application are so different. And this also appears in other application that we trace. So since the physical, uh, virtual and physical address, um, access patterns are so different, it's actually very important to focus on the physical ones since that's what the device is actually handling. So uh, we create a physical memory tracer that's uh, independent of any uh, specific hardware or specific hardware tools and can successfully capture the memory uh, access, uh, physical memory access between last level cache and main memory. To give a little bit more detail, we utilize Valgrind to capture the low and store instruction. Um, and we use its cache simulator to abstract the, um, to extract the last level cache miss as our memory trace. However, these memory trace are still in virtual form. So we modify the Linux kernel that installed the page table entries to uh, store the page table information in the proc file system uh, on the page four event. So with the page table information and the virtual memory access patterns, we can combine the two uh, to get fixed uh, memory, memory trace for an application. And now we have the trace. We can use the trace as the input to our trace-driven simulator to model CXL flash. So that's looking into the design of CXL flash. Uh, in this work, we did not create any new uh, methods. Instead, we tried to uh, integrate existing optimization techniques. In particular, we uh, include a DRAM cache uh, to solve the granularity mismatch issue and the device lifetime issue. And we further include MSHR and Prefetcher to further hide the, uh, the latency of the device. And to validate the usage of each of these components, uh, we ran exp uh, experiments with synthetic workloads. And to accomplish all this, we create a, a trace-driven simulator based on existing SSD simulator, MQSIM and MQSIM-E, um, uh, to do the evaluation. And so let's walk through the design process together. Uh, to start off, let's just try to uh, service all the, host, all the host requests directly from the flash memory backend. And as you can see, the average access latency is way above 400 microseconds for all the workloads. And additionally, uh, the inter-arrival time between uh, requests sending to the uh, flash memory backend is very short. To solve this, let's add a DRAM cache so that um, host, re uh, host requests that's accessing cache data can be directly serviced from DRAM. And as you can see, the average access latency got significantly reduced. And in addition, uh, since many requests now are being directly serviced by DRAM, uh, DRAM cache, uh, the request sending to the uh, flash memory backend is uh, their last of them. So, so the interval time uh, for the flash memory requests are, uh, becomes longer, meaning that there are less flash memory traffic. Um, but as you might have noticed from the previous slides, uh, for workloads such as matrix multiplication and main heap, when there is a large cache, uh, the average access latency is still very high. And let's look a little bit further. So let's look at the CDF for these work, uh, of access latency for these workloads. And as you can see, the device is experiencing uh, long tail latency. And this is primarily due to what we call the repeated flash reads. Uh, so assume that the host is trying to access data A from the device. And data A is not in the, uh, in the cache, so this is a cache miss. So the device has to move the data from flash backend to the uh, cache. However, before the data A is ready in the cache, uh, the host subsequent requests might want to access data A again. And without a certain component, uh, this unfortunately will be treated as another cache miss. Uh, and forcing the device to uh, read the data again from the flash backend, and we'll call this repeated flash reads, and can cause uh, unnecessary flash memory traffic. So to solve this, let's add a MIS status holding register, or MSHR, uh, that can track the ongoing uh, flash requests and, and the subsequent host requests, so that when the device, uh, the data is ready in the device cache, um, the the device can service uh, the corresponding request at once to avoid the repeated flash reads. And as you can see, with MSHR, the long tail latency of the device got reduced. 
And to further hide the long tail latency of flash memory, uh, memory read and write, uh, we can add a prefetcher. And I will tell, uh, I will cover more details about prefetcher later in this talk. So now I'll present you the basic structure of CXL flash. Um, let's explore the uh, effectiveness of uh, existing policies and algorithms for caching and prefetching. Uh, in our work, we, we have four major objectives when we do an evaluation. However, due to time, I would not be able to cover all of them. Uh, so if you are interested, please uh, refer to our paper for more information. Uh, but today, I will, um, I will cover part of the three major objectives. So to start out, that, let's try to check how effective are the existing cache policies. And then let's see if adding a prefetcher actually can improve the performance. And finally, let's, uh, let's check uh, the impact of virtual to physical address translation on the device performance. So uh, here we implement four existing cache policies and four prefetchers. And um, most of them are, imp uh, are, be are proven implementable uh, in hardware, and uh, all of them fit in the design space of CXL Flash. Um, the life left hand table here shows the evaluation setup for, uh, for the experiments, and the right hand figure here shows the five real world workloads that we use to evaluate the uh, device performance. And for more information, please refer to our uh, paper. So to start off, let's check how effective are, uh, the existing cache policy are. And the, uh, the primary uh, performance metrics we use here is the fraction of requests that is experiencing sub-microsecond latency. And as you can see from the left-hand figure here, CFLRU or clean first LRU uh, performs the best. Uh, because this policy prioritizes evicting clean cache line first to reduce the amount of uh, writes that need to be sent back to the flash memory backend. Uh, and as the right hand figure here shows, uh, CFLRU achieved the uh, least amount of flash write count. And since we just talked about flash writes, which is corresponding to program and erase uh, uh, of flash memory, and recall that uh, one of the concern about programming when we raise is the device lifetime. And so here we utilize a write count execution time and the uh, device endurance uh, value to estimate the device lifetime when running each workload indefinitely. And as you can see, CXL flash can last for at least 3.1 years for page rank which is the most, uh, most intensive work, uh, workload among the five. So this implies that even under high pressure, uh, CXL flash can still maintain a reasonable lifetime. And next, our next objective is to check how, um, if, if having a prefetcher can actually improve performance. And as you, um, in the, here the legend, MP here stands for no prefetching and the rest then, uh, are for the four prefetcher we implemented. And as you can see, 68% to 91% of the time, uh, CXL flash can service a request within one microsecond. However, you may also notice from the highlighted cases, uh, sometimes having a prefetcher can actually degrade performance. And let's check why prefetcher improves performance first. Uh, in cases such as page rank and radiosity, where prefetcher improves performance, it's uh, due to achieving high accuracy. Here, accuracy refers to the amount of prefetched data that has been accessed at least once over the, over the total amount of prefetched data. And as you can see, for these two workloads, prefetcher uh, are achieving relatively higher accuracy than the, uh, than the other cases. And now let's check why prefetcher degrade performance. And this is primarily due to cache pollution. So assume the device cache is a fault and there's prefetched data. Uh, this prefetched data have to uh, evict the data origin on the device cache. And if the host, uh, host want to access this data again, uh, this evict data again, the, the prefetched data unfortunately cause extra cache miss uh, making, uh, making it, uh, forcing a device to move the data again. And uh, here, cache pollution refers to uh, the amount of cache miss due to prefetching over total amount of cache miss. 
And here, as you can see, um, uh, for the result show here, the prefecture for uh, cases where prefecture degrade performance, they are causing high cache pollution. And finally, let's check the impact of virtual to physical address translation on the device performance. And as you can see from the experiment here, when we switch from virtual trace into physical trace, the prefetcher is having a hard time to accurately uh, prefetching data. To solve this, our work assume a clairvoyant kernel that have the information or understanding of the application's access pattern, and it generates a hint as a memory request to the device to help it move data from the flash memory backend to the cache early. And as a result here shows, uh, this method can potentially improve the device performance. And finally, I want to share my final thoughts. Uh, in this work, we study the capability of flash memory and the, and the effectiveness of existing uh, policies and algorithms, and we have shown that CXL flash has the potential to expand memory. However, we believe there are two major directions that future work in CXL flash can focus on. Uh, so first, in this work, we did not consider flash memory internal tasks, such as uh, wear leveling and garbage collection. Uh, and these internal tasks can have impact on flash memory perform uh, the CXL flash performance. Also, just, uh, just like what we just discussed, uh, sometimes prefetchers cannot uh, really achieve high accuracy and can cause high cache pollution. And this means that there are still rooms for improvement in terms of uh, achieving theorem-like performance. And second, um, instead of just focusing on the internal design of, uh, of CXL flash, we should also study the end-to-end -end performance uh, of the device. And during the time we don't, uh, during the time we don't really have the hardware resource to uh, really study end-to-end -end performance for using CXL flash as a memory expansion device. But the host, um, host generated hint is still another example of system level design that can potentially improve the overall performance. And we believe it's important to keep studying the design of whole systems and how this system interact with one or more CXL flash device to achieve the optimal end-to-end uh, -end performance. And fi uh, finally, we believe CXL flash has a lot of potential and deserves a lot of attention. And we hope that our work can be a platform that future work can build upon. And thank you so much for listening to my talk today, and I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs>